after a long time, sorry, Amber. Yeah, sorry I've been away for a while, I just, I've just been busy. That's all it has been, just been busy in my free time and just a lot of stuff going on. But really, there's no major news as such. I'm still doing kind of the same work, still with Huix, no dramas. We are currently at a customer waiting on some uh, product to drop so I can finish off loading. So I'm just going to leave it out in 20 minutes or so and uh, hopefully see if I've got anything. Then uh, get cracking. So a company around uh, just north of uh, Shipton Malice at the moment, our usual customer, let's say. And we're going to go down to Wimborne, all around that area. So, uh, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, so, the sun's, it's still on the same death. There is some big news coming up, though. You know, I may not talk about it in this video. We'll see. I am pretty excited about it. You might get a grasp of what it might be. You know, it's, don't worry, by the way, I did it's not a job change or anything like that, but it is big news coming in, hopefully, a few, about three months, three or four months from now. You know, certainly for myself. But, uh, I'll save that for later, or in another video. It's not 100% confirmed yet, I would add, you know, take a pinch of salt, but it's, I think it's fairly definite. Um, I've changed the camera locations out so if I'm all over the shop that's why I've put, if I change my frontal camera over there, it is actually for a reason, well the primary reason is because the cable I use for use to be here, so here you normally are, I'm having to use for my PDA because the PDA mount isn't working so uh, in terms of charging the PDA up so I've had to plug that into the PDA uh, I suppose actually I could flip it around actually thinking about it if I've just realized my floor what happened there actually I could move you back to there but we'll try well from there today anyway for the sake of changing things around a wee bit and then we're and the frontal camera, which it seems to be looking okay. It's not occupying a lot of the screen area in terms of, you know, you're kind of sat in front of where my dash cam is, you know, down below anywhere. I can still see anything, you know, that was my main concern. No, but we'll try you from there, see what it's like. We may move you back in a future video. We may stay where we are. So yeah, so we're doing a lot of the same work, moving similar products around, so moving some uh, dairy product around at the moment. I uh, have been doing quite a lot of different work lately, so I do a so I'm sorry we're not starting doing a lot of different work, but I've had time to set up my cameras again while well, I've been waiting here and all that fun stuff as YouTubers you appreciate all the setup, etc, etc. So I've heard some background noises. As I said, we are at a customer's location, obviously I'm not filming directly onto the customer's location. Highlight the terms again of what I'm allowed to film, not allowed to film. I'm just not allowed to film customer sites at the end of the day. You know, I can film inside the cab like we are now, but I'm not allowed to directly film, you know, on customer sites, which I appreciate. You know, is a limitation, but, you know, it is what it is. 
And yeah, so anything else I need to tell you about? I saw some soy for just such a long time of no videos. I do seriously apologise. Uh, I didn't realise it was going to be such a big gap. But it's just been a mixture of me just being way too busy. Also just not being in the mood. Just not in the zone to vlog. You know. And there's been stages where we've just been pretty slow and and just doing the mundane normal stuff over and over again so and as I've discussed in other videos it is an issue when I'm doing the same work it's hard to vlog the exact same stuff over and over again because the content level gets very very limited from just doing as hard as like now chatting you know so today we're going to do kind of a vlog I thought of a long chat intro just so I can cover the reason what's happened. Not that anything's happened, it's just obviously the current crisis and all that, you know. But job wise, I've been lucky. I've been fortunate to work throughout the whole thing, you know, so far. You know, so I've been very lucky in other ways. You know, personally, I think I don't think I have to say that because you know we shouldn't be, you know, having to say I'm lucky to work. <laughs> you know, oh, but then again, yeah, I can see why. Yeah, but it's twofold. I mean, I'm believing we should be able to work anyway. <laughs> and we may chat about the big news coming later on in this video so I'll we'll probably go into time lapse and then you know I'm going to try and mix up the videos a wee bit as well so I've got a new starting format which I may not implement in this video but I may implement in future videos from now which I have been sort of working around with doing I may do it in this but I, I can't guarantee if I'm doing it or not so uh, Hopefully all goes well today, you know, we're a bit delayed because of waiting for product, but it happens. Trucking life, a lot of waiting about. I suppose it adds in, what do I do when I'm waiting about, doesn't it? it everybody does different things, I clean the cab, do a bit of polishing, a bit of YouTube, tube watching, you know, following other vloggers and all that, you know. Anything to occupy your time, but still staying focused on what you're doing. You know, each your own at the end of the day. It's about what you're doing, what you're allowed to do as well. You know, I enjoy cleaning the cab, cleaning the outside when I can. It's a bit awkward at this time of year because as soon as you clean it outside, it's back dirty within five minutes. <laughs> but I do my best, get get clean when I can and the ongoing battle of trying to keep a clean truck <laughs> and with going down on farms and all that you get dirty pretty quick but yeah so hopefully in future videos coming up we'll do hopefully a bit more different work stuff so we might go and do some of our Cornwall work hopefully you might end up doing we have to say I can't guarantee I, I have no say on what I do per week so it could be the same stuff for quite a few weeks, it could be a mixture of stuff. Anybody's guess at the end of the day. Um, I'm just right, I think, you know, but thank you very much for tuning in so far. And uh, I'll see you after the next time lapse. Uh, just for a quick shout out for those who do watch my channel, uh, if you haven't subscribed, just please just smash the subscribe button, it does help. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yet again, I do apologise for just the long, long, long time of me not vlogging or doing anything on the channel. I, I do apologise, you know, but life has to come first at the end of the day, you know. And as drivers, we have limited free time, and, and sometimes stuff has to be sacrificed to fit family things in, and you know other things that need to be done. So I'll see you back shortly. 
hopefully you enjoy the next time lapse if all goes to plan and I'll see you after that. See you in a second. Stopped off on move down to uh, basically grab some quick lunch or late lunch. Mostly it's bang on lunch actually, not bad. So, uh, we're still moved down to go down to Wimborne and then we're going up uh, towards Stroud, sort of way probably after. Uh, we'll probably do a big time lapse up for that one. So I thought I'd touch base now because uh, otherwise it's just going to be a long transit drive after. We tipped. Yeah, I mean, all's good. As I say, it's had a, an old chap and his missus pull out me on the junction <laughs> but things happen at the end of the day people make mistakes and things happen you know it's frustrating at the time you know, it's just try and keep your cool you know it is irritating at times but especially when you're trying to stop 44 tons or in our case now trying to get 44 tons to move <laughs> the weight transfer just to limit the you know I hope it has probably is one of the issues with the DAF I found is it does struggle for traction over the Scania and I realised I was driving a Scania the other week you know similar kind of conditions and I know out hard driving this that it's night and day difference. Same layout as the tank axle truck as well, like this. You know, open it's more of a powerful truck, but that doesn't really matter on the traction front. It probably would mean, in theory, you would lose traction more easily. But uh, who knows at the end of the day. So we're going to go through Yeovil, cut towards, I think it's Sherburn, and head down from Sherburn towards um, Blamford, that way. And yes, I did stop at Greg's. Not sponsored, not <laughs> anything like that. So, uh, what's the big news I was on about earlier in the video? Uh, you may guess, I'm not... I was going to hold this off and play it over a few, quite a few videos, drag it out. But I don't see the point in that. I'm, I'm much rather just be clear and honest. You know, I think I'll maybe get a new truck. And it'll be a Scania 500 tank axle next gen so uh yeah so i'm actually pretty excited hence why i was talking about losing the traction 
and all that as well. And I will be doing a video, an update video on the DAF. The pros, the negatives, you know, what's my thoughts of driving for over a year. You know, I mean, they're not bad trucks. You know, they are what they are, you know. And not the, you know, I'll leave the rest for that video. But you might gather where this might be going. <laughs> So it's going to be hard for you to wait, so I don't want, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I want to be honest, at the end of the day about it, you know, the pros, the cons, you know, and it's very easy to find negatives, as they always say, and it is to find positives. Yeah, so... Hopefully a new truck next year. It's pretty certain, but uh, as like anything in transport, it's subject to change. All right, let's see what's going on here. We've got a cyclist in slip mode. We're going to pan out a little bit earlier. Keep a wider berth, because he's just going to keep going, I suspect. Get past him. I don't want to be able to be sat down behind him, on, behind him all the way down this, no reason. Not that I want to be either. Yeah, but uh, all's good, as they would say, you know. Um, I may take a, I think I've got to take a, but I will try and aim to take a picture of this and hopefully stick this up here. I'm a bit ashamed to say the truck got a bit damaged the other day. Yeah, damaged the air pod. Yeah, pheasant flew out the uh, hedge on the A30 down Cornwall Way. You know, I was doing about 56 or so. Literally flew out, got sucked up, impacted on like the headboard. At first I thought it damaged uh, my spotlight. Bear in mind, probably about a month ago, a tree branch knocked one of the spotlights and damaged that, so when he had got that sorted, so I was like going, oh no, don't be in the spotlight again. Uh, it's damaged the cowling, it's not a major thing, it's just damaged the cowling on the AirPod. I said, like, maybe jump out of my skin though. The fud it made. Nothing I could have done about it, to be honest. It just, it just flew out the hedge. I wasn't going to slam on the brakes. We wouldn't have done anything either, besides some cause issues with other road users. Just felt safe and just to, you know, run with it. As I say, I did stop and lay by further down and assess what what was up and you know, to make sure it wasn't anything too extreme. It happens, as I say. It, I've hit pigeons before, and uh, I was going to say I have hit a hawk once before, it's not the loudest one I've ever hawk. I think it's a hawk or something like that, bird of prey or some description. Didn't deliver it, just guess again, just flew out of nowhere. Okay, out of sight. It is what it is, it happens, I'm not proud of it, but you know, sadly it does happen. And in those situations, you've just got to run, you know, you basically don't get really much time to react to it anyway in the first place. And you kind of have to run through pros and cons as well, slamming on. And as I said, you, know, you have put people's lives at risk if you slam on or, you know, make it a far more dangerous situation for other people. You know, obviously if it's a human life, on the other hand, fair enough. You know, it's symptoms. Yeah, so that's probably the exciting bit of news, or well, negative news this week <laughs> that's happened. You know, tell, tell me down in the comments before if you're, if you're a fellow driver, or, or even if you're just a car driver, have you struck a animal out on the roads before, a bird, pigeon, deer, or whatever, you, whatever it may be? <laughs> Sure, some people have uh, more exciting tales than I have. My uh, pheasant, you know, 
I know one of our work colleagues, uh, his, his car got seriously damaged by a deer a while ago now, about a year ago now. Also, very fortunate. But all dangers on the road, stuff you got to be aware of. At least I wasn't on my motorbike and struck a pheasant. <laughs> I don't think that would have been good. It's a bit surprised how because normally they fly out quite low, but uh, you know who knows at the end of the day. Yeah, so hopefully these are all cool, you know. And uh, thank you very much for still following me. I as I said at the beginning of this, I do apologise that, you know, of just a, a new explanation gap of proceedings. I'll give a bell back in a minute. I'll give a bell back in a minute. <laughs> Meet the boss. I'll give a bell back in a minute. Yeah, so, as I was that all's cool, so, the plan as it stands at the moment, we're going to get down to Ribbon, get this tipped off, and then we're going to head up to Stroud, which uh, about two hours, two, maybe two and a half, give or take, I suspect. I have to see what the score will be, I may have to do a 15 today, I suspect, which. Uh, I hope I was only going to go there 13 today, but hey ho. We'll get the job done, we need to get the job done. So, what we've been doing, doing a lot, been doing a lot of like molasses, raffinate sort of stuff recently as well. All sorts, really. Into a few new customers as well. But as I say, I can't name the customers as such. You can probably gather where I might be going to if you have knowledge of in the industry, you know. Top, top top secret but you know I'm not allowed to film customer sites so I don't really like to name them overly if I can help I know I've named the old customer here and there but I try to uh, um, go into such and such but as I said you, you might know where I'm going to by just purely location what we're carrying <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day I have to follow my directive as I say I know it does impede on content, which you know, in a YouTubing sense is a bit frustrating, but I do actually understand it why the company wants that to be like that. But, you know, on several different levels, liability and all sorts of stuff. I fully get it. You know, that's I said why I respect it fully. Yeah, but uh, aside from that, you know, I'm open to any comments for ideas and stuff you want to see. Just bear in mind, as I said, I am limited by what I can film in terms of if it needs to be done on the customer side, I probably can't do it. No, but if there is something I want to say, just boot is going to mention it down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. You know, within reason, of course. this Honda. No one's doing anything. Are you going to really? Yes, I need to dominate this junction slightly, just so my trailer can uh, follow around this initial bit of bend. There we go. Oh. 
Good. Just take it steady, as I say, you know, free think it, do what you can. You know, when you've got a heavy load like this and you pull out the roundabout, there's a good chance somebody will come round the roundabout when you've committed on to it already. And you hold them up, but it is what it is at the end of the day. You know, within common sense, you know, you need to do what you need to do. Binding by the road laws as well. And so it takes us sometimes a little bit to get moving, and also moving safely. There we go. I mean, I don't mind going for the oval. It's, you know, it's okay. You know, not the worst place. Best in London, <laughs> as they would say. So what I'll do is we'll do a time lapse after off tip. So the next bit of footage you'll see is probably a bit of time lapse. We go where up to uh, Stroud most likely, and then I'll do probably aim to do an outro or whatever happens from there. So it does take a little bit of time at the customer up there to get loaded so uh, I might be a bit tight at the time when I come out so it might be part to Let's do the smart thing I'm just right here for a second so we know we can safely get across yeah it's right now we can go now we am going to block the crossing So I'll catch you in a bit, because it's just going to be a queuing up to traffic lights now. Not going to be anything particularly exciting. I probably should have done this a bit later, we're going up and down some of the hills, but uh, never mind. I'll catch you in a little bit. Control. 
Yeah, so delivery went good. No dramas, which we like. We need to get up to the customer up at uh, Stonehouse Stroud as soon as we can. So I'm happy there, quite desperate. So we are going directly there since we've got the time. So plan is get loaded and I'll get parked up somewhere where that'll be. I'll be. I'll worry about that later, as they would say. I've got a small car on that side I really do not like to manoeuvre in and you've got a car on your inside on the roundabout like that Safer, safe option, smart option. Not worth the risk. I think I probably could have got away pulling him up, but you never know with car drives half the time. It's sometimes best just to, you know, hold off and do it where it's a bit safer in that case. Because so I'd be able to get past me now. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah, so I thought I'd do the outro bit now because by the time I get out of uh, our customer, it's just going to be pitch black. You might be struggling to see things in the camera as things are already. So, my current plan is we're going to head up the M4, turn off at Swindon, and go on the A417, I think it is. I killed one, I forgot which number it is, but. Big road around Swindon, up to the M5, and bog down the M5, down to the Stroud Stone House. That bing bang bosh, it's done. Which I'm, we actually went to Castle, it's a bit quicker, but it's a bit slower there, so we could be in Castle for about two hours as well. Get the job done. Well, it's still finishing the 13th today, but it's definitely going to be a long one today. Yeah, there's a chance if we're, you know, whoa, that white van man just there, <laughs> he started coming in on me by the tractor unit. Lucky. As I've been talking about, it's a bit stuff like that today, but you know, people in a rush, whatever. It's something it is what it is, it happens. But makes you wonder. I mean, the road's been pretty busy today for a so called lockdown. I must add, I know people will be able to go out walking and all that, but it has been quite busy. Uh, and generally this lockdown has been. I'm not anti-lockdown by the way. I'm not, I'm not against people being out and about to be honest. I'm not saying either way, you know, really where I stand, but you know, I'm not saying people should be there, it's just uh, interesting. There's a lot, lot more people out caravans about, all sorts of stuff. Okay. But it is what it is. They've still got to deal with it. Yeah, so being a pretty average day today, it's a bit of a change of plan because uh, we loaded up earlier. I basically took all the product they had, so there wouldn't be any more product for today there. So, the original plan was for me to go back and get a, technically a third load out today. Uh, obviously plans have changed as they do in transport and that's another thing in being a trucker but if you're a trucker you know exactly what I'm talking about you know plans change things happen you know remain flexible at the 
moment. So it's letting the empty crews take care of it, just monitoring here and there. Also, you know, if you're using a truck with active crews, still monitor what it's doing. Because sometimes you can do some random stuff. Sometimes it's, you know, when you should really change down and all that. It should be pretty cool along the motorway. It's not had too much issue. But obviously, like anything, treat it with respect. You know, be cautious. You are in charge at the end of the day. side lights on at minimum. I mean we've got full full lights on them, not full beams, but you know, all our lights on at the moment. That van ahead of us, not in the tail light on. And it's fading light and people are doing that still. And you wonder why accidents happen. You really wonder why. <laughs> it's people like that. Why partly why it happens. People who don't check their lights, you know, are working. Or knowing how the vehicle lights operate. I have seen on some vehicles that the only lights up, I think, is the front and side lights. And people think, oh, it's all the lights that's lit up on the car because they haven't checked the rear. Let's do that. Which you can probably say fair enough to extend, but you should know your capabilities of your car in terms of what does what in the basics, in terms of how the lighting works. You know, so you know how to set it up or what mode to put it in, you know. But hey ho, it is what it is. It's just fascinating, you see a lot more, there's still a lot of people about. Even when it's pitch black, though, never never lights on sometimes. Also being very dozy, and sometimes it is on like lit motorways occasion you'll see that at night time. So maybe somebody's pulled off from the services maybe and hasn't realised which you could probably say fair enough, but it's really dangerous nevertheless. And it's incredibly dangerous. I mean all it takes is another dozy driver who isn't paying much attention. And they miss that van. Matches in with the road, They're not paying a huge amount of attention, or it's in the blind spot. fascinating the amount yeah and it is what it is as I say stuff you see as a trucker <laughs> never stopped to baffle you I mean you think you see it all and you haven't <laughs> Enjoy watching uh, Trucker Deity's videos lately on my private account. I must add, <laughs> I do have two YouTube accounts now. Obviously, my YouTubing account and then my private one. Uh, it's all the you know, watch and stuff on. That's what I do. It's that choice at the end of the day. It's a lot. No. Just because my private one's got all all my stuff on there, I like to watch. a little bit of uh, Luke C. Not too much of Luke C lately. I've been watching obviously Scott and a little bit of uh, Genko. Uh, not, not, uh, to be honest, not much of um, I'm forgetting, forgetting his name. Um, come to me in a bit, but uh, you might guess who, who it is. He's gone off to do the car transporting and stuff. Which is interesting nevertheless, but it's a dark thing. I have no idea why it's just that content there's a watch, to be honest. You know, the we watch what catches by, and like most people probably. I'm not saying this stuff doesn't catch your eyes, I suppose they haven't got around to, you know, catching with everybody. What they're up to, and, and I suppose I'm more into, uh, you know, 
class one sort of trucking and Arctic trucking and stuff like that. So I've followed quite a few Americans as well. I've been watching a lot of restoration videos on like cab overs and such like and freight liners. Which, uh, you know, really enjoying watching. You know, I find it fascinating the American trucking scene. You know, the big trucks. Proper trucking. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'm sorry if it's been a bit of a bland video in some ways. You know, I've had a bit of news in terms of maybe getting a new truck. It probably will be a Scania Next Gen 500. Pretty certain on it. But like anything in transport, I'll only believe it when I see it. I mean, if it is the case, I am pretty excited. I, w I won't tell. I am. Enough. Yay! Get me back on Scania. <laughs> I say, not saying the DAF's a bad truck, but I much prefer Scania over the DAF. You know, it's been a pleasure to drive the DAF, have a different experience. But it, you know, a nice thing to hang a different experience, it makes you appreciate you know, stuff that you did enjoy before, but you know, highlight why you enjoyed it more. You know the pros and the cons and there's good some good and bad points with the DAF and you know I see why people like DAFs. You know nice drugs to a certain extent, a bit dated in some aspects, you know, but it is what it is. And I say a lot I won't say too much more about it because as I said that it deserves its own video in its own right. And what I'm sort of thinking is I'll probably take you around a bit like a cab tour video so I'll show you some of the things I'm meaning and you know then and there where I can try and make it a bit more exciting hopefully maybe a snitch past memory services as you can see so we're all good I'm going to hardcore it up because we can Get there as soon as we can. Eight more miles before Swindon. Yeah, so that's how hopefully everybody's all cool. Everybody's taking care of themselves, you know. As things are, you know, in these strange old times, as I would say. Well, not old times, but strange times we find ourselves in. I tell you, it'd be quite a nice evening, to be honest. I must add. Quite liking that sky. Even though it's got a bit of cloud off to the left. It's actually looking to be quite a nice evening. Good trucking evening. <laughs> That's what I like to see. I mean, today, weather-wise, been pretty good, to be honest. As things have been. Yeah. Sunset, the road, spot on. That's, that's what we've got at the moment. Living the dream. Part of the reasons why I like trucking. And I do, I really like trucking a lot. I mean, obviously I do, I tramp. Yeah, it's not an easy lifestyle by no means of imagination. Yeah, I have my off days. Like anybody, any, no matter how passionate you are as a trucker, you still have your off days and you go, oh, I wish I was home or whatever. Or not in the mood today, <laughs> you know. But most, most of all, I, I, I'm a good days. It is a job you've got to have a bit of passion for. You've got to, you know, it's not really a job, it's a lifestyle, it's, you know, it sometimes doesn't seem like it sometimes, but it truly is, it is a lifestyle, it, you know, it is worth talking about, you know, the pros, the cons, you know, as I'm a big believer in, if you don't mention and talk about issues, 
how are they meant to get fixed or how are people meant to be aware of them? You know, it's my kind of view on things. You know, want to keep things quiet, as I say. Within reason, of course. So yeah, so before I rumble on like a broken record any further, but by uh, call a halt to the video, and I'll yet again say thank you very much, you know, for watching. You know, it is seriously appreciated. And if you haven't smashed that subscribe button yet, or the bell icon, please do so. It does help out the channel, it's especially the subscribe button. I'm too bothered about the bell. So everything's optional, but you know, I see why people don't hit the bell because it can get loads of notifications. <laughs> They're constantly off all the YouTubers all the time. But I guess we try. And if you have any ideas, any comments, feel free to comment down below. You know, I do try to get back to you when I can. I do read all the comments. You know, so feel free to. Uh, Comment down below any thoughts, any ideas, any questions. You know, shoot away, as I say. And yet again, please uh, go and check out my Facebook and mainly my Instagram. I um, haven't been active on either lately, but I'm more active on Instagram than I am. But please check out both. And I will catch you in the next one, which hopefully... I will get back to having a semi-regular routine. I will try to do so. Can't hold me to it, but you know I will try to. I'm going to try and hold my hand to the grill on this one. So I'll see you hopefully in a week's time in the next one. Over. To the black